here. Um, I'm going to start on my chicken cutlet parm in order to make that with my sauce that I did in my first video. Um, now I can get started on my chicken parm. I'm having a big dinner party tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure everything's set. So what I did was I bought a big pack of chicken breasts, boneless, skinless, um, but I got them thick because it was cheaper. It saves you a lot of money. A big cheap one. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut them myself and make them thin sliced. If you choose to buy them, the regular packages of um, already thinly sliced chicken cutlets, it just takes one more piece out of the <laughs> out of the work, which is great. So I'm right now going to start slicing these up, make them thin, and then we're going to start with our entire process. Um, I have preheated the oven at 400 so far, and we'll get to it. Thanks. Oh, I'm not frying them this time. I'm actually baking my uh, my chicken cutlet parm, so my chicken cutlets will be baked. A little bit more time, but a little less greasy. I'm trying to be a little bit healthy here. <laughs> All right. So I'm done cutting up all of my chicken. Now we're gonna get to the nitty gritty bones of everything. I took a pan, a roasting pan. Depending on the size would be more according to how many pieces of chicken you're using. Um, trying not to repeat myself too much, but because I have a big party, I have a lot of chicken. So I have an olive oil cooking spray just to lightly um, make sure the pan is greased. I also put aluminum foil and um, covered it in aluminum foil because it's better for cleanup. You know, if you put it in the pan itself, the cleanup is a little bit harder. So for me, I figured I've done it before like this and it actually worked out much better for cleanup. I'm going to move that to the side right now. I have all of my chicken cut up into thin slices in this bowl in the sink. Um, then I have my eggs. So I take two eggs. Again, you'll probably only need one. But I'm doing two eggs. I got a lot of chicken to cut up. <laughs> so I had to cut up. Make sure not to get any shells. Two eggs. A little bit of milk. Um, makes your eggs nice and just gives them a little bit more texture. So a little bit of milk. Um, I would say if you want measurements, I would say literally like two tablespoons of milk is more than enough milk just to give it a little bit of something. And then I'm gonna take my chopped garlic and I'm going to take a teaspoon. I'm using a tablespoon, but I know how I eyeball. But use a teaspoon of garlic in there and mix it all. To make our breadcrumbs, do it a little add a little bit of flavor to it because I'm baking. We're doing baked chicken and then baked chicken parmesan. Obviously the parmesan is going to be baked anyway. But um, so what I'm going to use is some Italian herb breadcrumbs. Italian, it would be Italian style. The breadcrumbs that you buy, you can buy from you, you can buy store brand, non-store brand. Honestly, they all work the same. I'm actually using both Progressive and an America's Choice one because they taste exactly the same. I've tried them both. I'm pouring it all in. Then you're going to use a nice amount of Parmesan cheese. It's um For Parmesan cheese, I say use a cup. Use, what did I just use? I used about three cups of... Um, breadcrumbs obviously because I have a big and a big amount of chicken and then I only used one cup of Parmesan cheese so it's not too much okay then you're gonna use some black pepper um, when you're measuring the black pepper so it, a teaspoon to te two teaspoons eyeball it eyeball it eyeball it it's always the best way to do it um, and then a little bit of basil basil leaves again my basil leaves is only Again, two teaspoons. Half it, half it, half it, half it if you're doing a lot less. And again, my love for adobo. Uh, two, te two, uh, two teaspoons. Again, I'm gonna 
put this up on, mix it all together, make it a nice little mixture. See, my nice little breadcrumbs. And then I have my nice little eggs that I'm still, I have to uh, mix up. What we're going to do is take each piece of chicken, we're going to lay it out nicely on my pan. I'll show you how it looks. Let's set this whole area up. Alright, so I, I've rinsed all of my chicken, I've cut all of my chicken thin. So I put it in my eggs, throw it in my breadcrumbs, and then just lay it flat. In my pan. I'll do this with all of these. Dip it in my eggs. Put it in. Let's see if I can get this to come down so you can see. Okay. My darling son is obsessed with Blaze and the Monster Machines. So you'll hear a lot of that. <laughs> all right. Here we go again. I'm going to take a piece of chicken. Throw it in my eggs and garlic and milk. Not too much, you just wanna cover it. And you're gonna throw it into the breadcrumbs. Get the breadcrumbs all in there. And lay it flat in the pan. All right, and that's that. Let me finish doing this, and then we'll go on to baking. Um, as soon as you're done with the pan, what you're going to do is, while I'm doing this, I can just tell you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the pan, you're going to put it in the oven. The oven should be preheated at 400 degrees, and you're going to keep it in the oven for about a half hour. Um, I'll change that if I have to. Uh, it's according to each stove. My stove is pretty on point, so I'm going with a half hour because you're going to have to cook it again. You know, because after it's done, then we got to do the, the sauce part, the yummy sauce part. All right, so let me finish this. I'm going to put it in my oven. I'll send, I'm going to right now put on, on the screen basically all the ingredients. So you can just take that and use that. And then also all the information. All right. Okay, so it's been a half an hour, and it's time to take my chicken out of the oven. Let's take our chicken cutlets out of the oven, and they look perfect. Let me get a picture of my chicken cutlets. There's my chicken cutlets, all done, all baked, all ready to go. So now, we are going to start preparing for our chicken cutlet parmesan. Every, we have all of our ingredients now. So you're going to need um, the sauce, chicken cutlets, cooked of course, and mozzarella cheese. Really it when it comes to chicken cutlet parm. So um, I'm gonna start cutting up my cheese and then we'll put it all together. We'll put it in the oven. I'm gonna keep the oven on. Do not shut your oven off. Mm. Keep it on, still at 400. Um, Actually, we're going to lower it to 350 because we're only really going to melt the cheese on everything because everything's pretty much cooked. So in order to make chicken cutlet parm, we're just making sure that the cheese melts on top and cooks thoroughly. All right. So let's get to it. So we're ready. I took my big pan, my big roasting pan. Again, sizing is according to how much you have. And I sprayed it with my light olive oil cooking spray. All right, then I have my chicken cutlets ready, my mozzarella cheese ready, and my sauce ready. So everything is together right here. Here's my pan. So my sauce is right next to the pan. So we're gonna start with the sauce. Make sure your oven is already uh, preheated at 350, because remember, again, everything's already cooked. 
So all we're doing is making sure that the cheese melts and everything is nice and warm, okay? So we're gonna do a layer, a very light layer of sauce on our pan, okay? Um, make sure when you're putting your sauce in that you do not get the, the, the bay leaves, okay? If you do, you just throw them out. You do not need to keep the bay leaves in the sauce after the sauce is done. I keep them in there for now, but if I find one, it's going in the garbage. Again, I lined my pan with um, uh, aluminum foil because it's just easier for cleanup. Um, if you don't use it, then you gotta clean the whole pan and it's not a lazy technique, but it kinda is. It's more also because it's really hard when this browns to get it off of your pan. You can scrub as hard as you want. It's like your pan never becomes the same. <laughs> So for me, I just found it easier to just put some aluminum foil on and put it out that way. All right, so there's my light layer. You saw how quick and easy that was. So now I'm gonna take my chicken cutlets and I'm gonna line them up um, flat. So, um, flat. You can have them overlap each other. It doesn't really matter more because again, everything's cooked. We're just, we just wanna get the cheese melted on top. We really do just wanna do that. Okay, so that's layer one. Layer one is as is. So, we're going to put our cheese on top. I bought um, fresh mozzarella in balls, and then I cut them up. Um, you can use part skim, you can use whole milk. This is, again, all types of cooking is basically your preference. So you're gonna do the same thing. It's your preference your type. I personally like this um, this cheese because when it melts it's so fresh because it's fresh mozzarella. I also use the Palio um, cheese, mozzarella cheese. I use that also. I actually have that for my big ziti recipe because that one I really have to slice up and I bought a lot of packages of that. But this is just, you know, for, for my simple chicken. I should have about four. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have enough. We're going to double layer, but not a lot. So now after that, you're going to put the sauce on. Now pay attention because this is where it gets tricky because this is a, a bottom layer. So now we're going to have a top layer of chicken. The top layer, I just want to cover each and every um, chicken. Not, not drown it, just cover it a little bit, you know. Depends on how much sauce you like, but honestly, don't drown it. Do not drown your chicken. Um, so if you notice right now, I'm covering the, the, the cheese, and you're like, wait a minute, how are you going to brown your cheese? Because I'm doing another layer. If, you're wor if you were only doing one layer, then you do the sauce first, then the cheese on top. Because you have to end everything with cheese on top. Why? Because the cheese is what needs to melt. So now here's my second layer. And I could kind of just sporadically throw this in different places because I don't have... Too much chicken left. I just wanted, I just definitely had chicken left. Little pieces too. Delicious. I saved a couple for myself too. It's just chicken cutlet. So I can make like a chicken cutlet sandwich or something. All right, and that's that. So now I'm going to finish off my cheese on top everywhere. Okay, there will be no more sauce going on, okay? There's so much sauce in this right now, the last thing you want to do is drown it, again, as I said. But you do want to cover up some of the corners of the chicken, because you don't want that to get too dry either. So, I'm going to cover up some corners, 
just so it's not all too dry. You don't want the top pieces of chicken to get too dry either. Again, if you only have one layer, which you really should have is just the one layer. If you really only have one layer, put the sauce on first at the bottom, use the chicken, put the sauce on top, and then put the cheese as your final layer. That's your best way of doing it. All right, I think this looks good. This looks perfect. We'll get it in the oven now. And that's it. Let's cook it for... Okay, looks like our chicken cutlet parm is done. So, I'm gonna get my gloves all ready so I can pull it out of the oven. Make sure you get those heavy duty gloves. <laughs> so, I'm gonna show you this beautiful concoction. Yummy. So you see it's bubbling, it's nice and brown, and it's done. So, that is our chicken cup of parm. Very excited to get this on the table for everybody to eat. Mmm, it smells delicious. So that's chicken cutlet parm. And... I sure hope you enjoyed that one. <laughs> All right, I just wanna show you my final product of my chicken cutlet parm. So, chicken cutlet parm, nice and brown, nice and yummy. You get all your sauce in there. Serve as is with a spatula. You can make anything out of it. Hope you enjoyed, and enjoy it as much as I will, because this is delicious.